Washington's got a blue chipper. Four-star offensive lineman Champ Talele is in the boat. You are Locked On Huskies, your daily podcast on the Washington Huskies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back in to another edition of the Lockdown Huskies podcast. I'm Roman Tomashoff. That's Lars Hansen. He's a site editor with Athlon Sports Inside the Huskies. I'm the site editor with Huskies Wire. Thank you for making this your first watch or first listen today, hopefully, on this Thursday afternoon as we wanted to come at you with this episode early. Thanks to the, the big news that Champ Tawele is committed to Washington. But just a reminder that today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code with Lockdown College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. So, Lars, as I said, four-star offensive lineman, Champ Talele, who is ranked as the number 18 prospect in California, number 12 interior offensive lineman in the nation by 247 Sports, did commit to Washington on Thursday morning. And this is something, you know, Jed Fish, Joshua Moore, they tweeted out the gifts a little early, got got them out there on, on Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evenings. I was trying to watch the Celtics do some other things. But besides the point, because it sounded like something big was brewing. And... Not only is this big in terms of recruiting ranking, but he's 6'4", 325. This is a big dude. Not only that, when you go through and look at who offered him and who offered him within the last six to eight months, that that I think yeah. is the thing to look at. It was Georgia. It was Florida. It was a lot of programs where if you can play there, if they're saying you can play at Georgia, yeah. That's, now, again, is it a head-to-head -head battle that they won with Georgia? No. Let's be very clear no, about that. that. But head to head no, is but, over but, USC. No, no. Sorry, just want to make sure we, we 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 got that in there. Yep, exactly. It was a head to head with USC, which again is still a very significant big win. Head to head win because when you look at what Washington has been recruiting against, you know, you look at Matatagoa, you look at a number of guys where Washington has laid the foundation good with you know Jake Flores, Beerley, McMillan, a lot of three star guys that are good potentially four star guys down the road. But you really needed to start adding some true road graders, and this is one where. Brandon Carroll was the very first coach at Arizona in May 22 to offer Champ to LA. Brandon Carroll, that relationship basically won this thing over where if, you know, Brandon Carroll's not the offensive line coach, maybe Champ to doesn't have interest in Washington where Washington offered him on the pro previous step a year after Arizona did. So, so Washington in the old staff was behind the eight ball in that regard. But that's why when Jed Fish makes all these offers that early at Arizona, these relationships really have carried over to Washington. And that, that's an important testament to this coaching staff. So I'm really glad you brought that up because that's something with somebody who we're going to be talking about a little bit more uh, probably next week in Christian Thatcher, who announced his commitment date. He's somebody who I remember talking to him a couple of months ago. And one of the first things he said to me was, yeah, Arizona was one of my first couple offers my freshman year. And that's something that was really important to me. You hear that from a lot of guys. You hear that from a lot of these big time national recruits you go through. And a lot of the guys that, you know, Washington has set official visits with over the last couple of months. It's, oh, Arizona offered him pretty early. Arizona offered him pretty early. We know that's when Jed Fish was there. We know when that that's when the staff was there. And that's something I'm really curious to watch throughout these next couple of months as more of these guys start to commit. And, you know, if some more of these high level prospects like Champ Talele start picking Washington. That's something that I'm going to be really curious where obviously we're going to try to talk to as many of these guys as we possibly can, whether it be for our respective websites and for the show as well, or just, you know, when other people talk to them, whether it be Brandon Huffman, Tom Loy, you know, Steve Wilfong, whoever it might be, if that's something that a lot of these guys point to in picking Washington, it's yeah. Wash or, or this Washington coaching staff when they were at Arizona was my first offer, my second offer, whatever it might be, because it is important. A lot of these kids say, yeah, these, these coaches were the first ones to take a chance on me and the first ones to believe in me. And especially at Arizona where they didn't have some of the same resources that they did at Washington. You have to make sure you push that angle. You have to make sure that's a really big part of your selling point. It's we identified you super early on in the process. And obviously that seems to be one of the things that helped win the day with Chantal LA. And in that same regard, it's one thing to consider. It's one thing to offer a kid and identify talent early. It's another to identify this caliber of talent where you're you're getting a four star. Now, again, stars don't mean anything, but let's be real. When you look at it at the end of the day, that 2020 class, that 2019 class that had a lot of four stars, 
That is the type of talent you need to lay the foundation so that you can continue in 26, 27, 28, and so on, getting four and five stars. If, if you're building it where, where we saw Jed build it with, with a bunch of three stars in Arizona, that can work. It does yeah. take a little bit longer for those guys to hit and develop. So that's why when you when you add a Jake Flores and then you add a Champ Tulele on top of that, now you can start to look at expand the rest of this line out. When you look at Douglas Uchu, you look at a couple of other guys that have official visits still remaining. These guys can help recruit those guys, and you can start to see other four-star recruits like a Douglas Uchu say, "Okay, cool. Like, no offense to Jake Flores, but cool. It's good to see him go. But oh, now Doug, uh, now Chan Tulele is also going. Now Christian Thatcher yeah. is also going. If, if Christian Thatcher is, I'm just, I'm just, just to be clear because we're putting this out this week. He is not committed or anything like that. But if, if Guys like this and this caliber start to commit to the program. That's where the domino effect starts to come into play. Yeah. And that's why with Washington being in on all these four-star guys, we knew it was going to take a little bit of time for some of these guys to pop because when you're going after elite talent, elite talent can take all the time in the world. That's right. the that's the unfortunate part in this where could he have committed on that visit in May when, when Tristan Keeney McMillan committed? Probably. He sure. had a visit to the USC set. I believe actually moved the visit to USC again and is not going to take it now because it was going to be on June 21st. But, you know, with that, you know, you, the staff is doing it the right way. And I think that's the other thing for Husky fans where when you look at how this class is going, you say, oh, wow, they only have seven commits still, what, in the 30s, 40s, 50s on, on 247, probably in the 40s now with Champelele. But it's sure. not anywhere near where they want to finish this. But it's steadily improving. And when we look at Again, we're not going to always compare it to the last staff, but this staff does deserve a little more leeway in that regard because of, as we mentioned, the relationships that they develop and how many guys they're in at such an elite level. You could have 14, 15 guys committed right now, but not all of them are going to be the caliber you want, and you might end up just having to chase some of those guys off. So I like, honestly, the way their coaches are building this sat, this uh, this class up. It just is a little bit slower than maybe we wanted, but I'd rather have it be slow and steady than, hey, we got four or five stars to commit in March who are now decommitted in June. Sure. All right. I I know. I totally get where you're coming from there. I want to switch gears really quickly before we move on because I want to talk about him as a player. Where this is a guy where the first thing that I notice is, yeah, 6'4", 325, obviously, as I said right off the bat. This, this dude is huge. And I could see him at both guard or tackle. And it feels like with a lot of these guys that Brennan Carroll has been recruiting, it's the ability to play both. Where I know when you talk to Jake Flores, one of the things he emphasizes is, yeah, I can play all five positions along the offensive line. When we talked to Brennan Carroll early on in the spring, he said, yeah, I'm going to make sure everybody gets reps at center. I want everybody to train at every position and just have that flexibility and versatility when it's needed. And that's something where I truly do believe that Champ Talley could po- play four positions at the college level if, you know, and obviously it's up to the coaching staff to figure out where he fits best, where it likes him the most, all, all that sort of stuff. But this is a dude with all kinds of power that comes downhill, is really nasty, pulls really well, and moves very, very well for his size. And the more I watch him, the more I, I truly do believe that he could play tackle if needed, where there are some things that I have questions about, whether it might be his arm length, things like that, that might kick him inside the guard long term, which is fine. But it's about getting these players in the boat and then figuring out where they're going to be once they get to college. And that's something where, you know, whether Brennan Carroll does project him as a guard or a tackle. Great. That's fine. And now that he's in there, you could say, okay, yeah, we're going to try him in his first spring practice. Like we saw with Pocky Fee now, like we saw with Michael Watkins, we're going to try him with three, four positions and then just figure it out. But this is what we've been saying. It's about getting the talent. And that's the most important thing when it comes to champ is that that talent is now here. And now Lars, something, something you alluded to, is this the momentum that Washington's coaching staff has been looking for? And we'll get there right after message from our good friends over at Game Time because Game Time makes getting NBA Finals tickets even faster and easier. Price on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to tip off, which is fantastic. If anybody, you know, any of our everydayers out there are down in Dallas and want to see the Celtics potentially pull off a sweep of the NBA Finals on Friday night, which would just make make my whole year. That'd be absolutely incredible. You love to see that because. 
There's nowhere better to buy those tickets than on game time because they got last minute deals where you can save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy theater, and so much more. You got zone deals. You can save even more when you choose a sectional like game time, choose the seats. You have seat views where you can get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. You can take the guesswork out of buying NBA final tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account and use code lockdown college for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for $20 off your first purchase. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. So Lars, you alluded to it right before the break there. Washington has been looking for the momentum on the recruiting on the recruiting trail. We've gotten questions from a lot of everydayers saying, Oh, when are some of these big commits going to come? When are these big commits going to come? This is the first one. And as you said, this staff is not even close to being done with where they want to be in terms of this recruiting class by any, any stretch of the imagination. There's a whole lot of guys coming in on June 21st for visits. We're going to get into that a little bit more next week, but this is the kind of guy where, as you said, it's, Oh yeah. Whoever it might be from, from that visit, whether it be CJ May, who's got his commitment date set for next month, whether it be Douglas Utu, whether it be maybe even Ladarian Clarity, where it sounds like he's probably going to end up staying in Florida, but I'm just alluding to him because he was another four star on that uh, spring game official visit list where some of these guys might see that and say, oh yeah, oh, I really like hanging out with this guy. I, I saw how talented he was. Now I want to just also end up committing to Washington. Where is this the kind of guy where you think can just really start to get that ball rolling downhill? No doubt. I think, and that's when it starts along the offensive line, that's kind of the area where you want it to start, start that growth out. Yeah. When you look at some of those guys, like four-star Ted and Vander Plug, a number of four-star receivers, four-star defensive end, four-star linebackers, it's, it's right. four-star after four-star. And that is exactly where we said this program would be in June, where the, the the interest is there with kids. It's just a matter of can we close? Can can you dub close? Not we because we don't have a role in that. Let's be real. <laughs> but with that being said, all the talent is on the board. I think in when it comes to some of these other guys that still have, I mean, John Mills has an official visit to Texas that you mentioned to me before the show. Smith the Rogbo, def, uh, edge rushers, another guy who's got a couple of visits set. Chase Sims is another one I believe who has another visit visit yeah, he's got in the books still to come. So there's a lot of these guys that Washington probably could get. It's just a matter of when. And I think that's the sure. important thing where we're not looking at, oh, is Washington, who is Washington still need to identify here? It's No, they've identified the guys. All the guys that they wanted are identified. It's just a matter of what's the order in which they commit. And then when you get to July, then you start to reassess and say, okay, the guys that have committed elsewhere, Darius Dixon to Penn State, uh, yeah. Dante Manning, uh, uh, Dimitri Manning, Manning to, to Oregon. Yeah. And there's a number of those guys where you can say, okay, cool. We can either say they're off the board or kind of go to the next set, but either way, the coaching staff has clearly already identified that next wave of guys where we've seen that are coming in, even in, in June, in that last weekend in June to where they're not going to be reactionary in August and September, trying to find some guys to fill out this class. It's just, some of these guys are going to want to wait till August, September. And the other important thing to remember with this is some of these guys are committed elsewhere who or who have committed elsewhere. Haven't watched Jen Fish coach at Washington. So I think we, yeah. similar to what we saw at Caleb DeBoer, where guys would say, Hey, you know what? I liked Washington, but I didn't really know what they were going to be like. And Oh, wow. These guys are, these guys are legit. Now, now I might need to reconsider where we, we saw Caleb Presley do that and, and a number of other guys do that. So I think Washington's in a good spot with that. It's, and the momentum is basically just right there. It's just each single domino has to keep ticking down. And really, Washington couldn't be in a better spot. So I, I, I do agree with you, but I also understand, you know, when we hear those things like, oh, why aren't there more guys committed where I think that what we just saw with Champ Talele is a really great example of where it could be because we can't project all of, all this out and just say, Oh, we know, you know, all these kids are going elsewhere or all these kids coming to Washington. We don't, we don't know that just yet where I'm sure we'll hear more over the, the coming days and the coming weeks about some of these guys, but look at how long it took champ Talele to make this decision where, as you said, he certainly could have committed back in May if he knew that this was where he wanted to be, but he took his time. He let the process play out and he came back around and said, yeah, Washington is where I want to be. And no matter what, at the end of the day, it's a win. And there are some other guys that, you know, 
I look at from that are coming up for this June 21st visit. One of the guys, you know, we, we mentioned Christian Thatcher already. Another one along the offensive line is Darius Afalabo, where he's put out his top four. And it seems like there's, he might be one of the guys that's, yeah, I wanted to make sure I got to Washington last or I kind of came back around, saw everything else. And if there are a bunch of commits that end up coming from this June 21st weekend, I wouldn't be surprised. There are a whole lot of talented guys coming in. Jonathan Epperson, four-star linebacker safety from uh, here in Washington. Zadra Rainy Sale being one of the big names. There are a lot of really talented players that are coming in. And it's just a matter of now finding a way to close. And if you get some of those guys from this weekend, or excuse me, from next weekend, I, I, I forget what day it is half the time. When you get some of those guys and c- combine them with the potential of a Chris Lawson who's committing on June 21st, and then you know we'll see what happens when we time to go. I it seems like there might be a chance that he flips too. There are some of these other guys where if you let the process play out and look at it at the end of July when maybe 80% of these kids are committed, if you look at that and say, oh, they had a 40% hit rate on some of these blue chip prospects, that's a different conversation. But right now, so many of these guys are still uncommitted because they have visits left to take because of whatever reason it might be. Being patient isn't the worst thing in the world. And again, if it turns out that a lot of these guys end up going elsewhere, different conversation. But you can't look at that right now because if Zadris Randy Sale, Christian Thatcher, Chris Lawson, some of these bigger name recruits who have either visited already or are going to be visiting over the next week or so, they decide to jump in the boat. All of a sudden, there can be a completely different outlook on this class, and we will look back on this date, on this Champ Talele commitment, as the moment where things started to snowball for one reason or another. No, no, and I think, but it, it really coincides with the, the timeline that we laid out back in February and March, where we said they're probably not going to have, they're not going to end May with you know twenty commits or fifteen commits or anything like that, but no, they no, will yeah, be in position. But they will be in position to get that number of commits between June and July because of the guys that they're bringing in for official visits. And I think the one thing to consider also is the staff is clearly not going to force anybody to commit. And the other side of that coin is when you are when you're recruiting elite talent, you're in a different bracket than oh hey we're getting this you know under the radar guy. So yeah, we, you can get a bunch of under the radar guys to commit, like I said earlier. But I think if you're a Washington fan, you would rather have to wait and be in contention for some of these blue chip prospects and say, hey, we got this, you know, six three, six four, six five, you know, you know, two way wide receiver who you know everybody else passed over. It's like, okay, those guys are sometimes worth taking, but you'd rather get an Andrew Marsh, you'd rather get a Philip Bell, you'd rather get a Chris Lawson, Donovan sure. Lagudi. You know, when you look at Raiden Vinesbread is kind of the guy that laid that foundation to where now all of these guys are taking their visits and deciding who wants to be the second and third receiver in the class. You can take that time because you have one receiver commit already. You already now have two offensive linemen commit. You now have an edge rusher committed so you can start to build out the defense. And the other thing to consider is similar to the offensive line, the coaching staff doesn't necessarily say, hey, you're going to play this position and this position only. Aside from quarterback, Sure. The only position where you're saying, hey, you're playing this position and this position only. Everybody else seems to be like, hey, we like you here, here, and here. We'll see what happens when you actually you know, get on campus and play and start to practice with us. Then we'll figure it out then. And I think that's the perfect approach to take because there's so many of these guys are we could like you know, Dylan Robinson. Do you take him as a cornerback? Do you take him as a safety? Do you take him as a linebacker? And you said, no, you just take him. Take yeah, you just, just take him. him. And, and, and that's and that's the thing. That's where Washington is at, where you have all these blue chippers in play, but you can't force them to make a decision. And the others, and within that same breath, even if they commit elsewhere, that doesn't necessarily close the door on them. It just means okay, now you kind of have to regroup and say, okay, we got Thatcher, we got a core, we got Sale. Okay, good. We're we're down a linebacker. We don't necessarily need to look elsewhere. But for some of these positions where maybe they only have two out of three committed then you can start to see, hey, do we want to go flip somebody else that we haven't offered yet that we've been keeping our eye on? So there's a lot of layers to the recruiting element, but they're in a really good position. And I, I wouldn't – it's understandable that fans are like, hey, where, where are all our commits? But this isn't a situation where they're in a bad spot. It's just they're kind of in a holding pattern right now. So I, I, I certainly hear what you're saying because I don't want to say that, you know, the, the, the side of the fan base is saying this is needed, that's still needed. like. That's all totally warranted. I get that. But I I absolutely, and I because I agree with where you're coming from. It's There's still so much work left to do. 
And you kind of have to wait and see. You can't just say, all right, well, this all needs to happen right now. Yeah, you'd love it. And like the Darius Dixon one especially is something that you can point to and say, oh, yeah, you know, it, like Penn State just closes on him right away. And uh, you look at just the, the interview he did after he committed. It sounds And they, they alluded to it on 247 saying, yeah, it was a bit of a comfort, comfort line victory for Penn State. Like, yeah, stuff like that doesn't necessarily look great. But, you know we go and we look back on this class in October, November, it's, Oh yeah, they got Ryland Dillard out in safety, who is a big time win. That that's, that's a guy I, I really want to keep my eye on over the next couple of weeks, you know, and then you, you pull off the, the upset and you get Dijon Lee all of a sudden. So yeah, no, this doesn't, this doesn't look that bad. You get some of these other guys in there as well, but it's just all about making sure that you're, you're in the fight and you're in the race. And that's one thing that Jed Fish's coaching staff has done a really, really good job of so far. And at the same point, it's totally understandable to be on the side of, I want to make sure to see them close on. And that's fine. But again, just to, to reiterate what we've been talking about is we could be looking back on this in a couple of weeks if all of a sudden four or five, six blue chip guys end up committing to follow Champ Talele. Boom. All of a sudden, that's the momentum you're looking for. And this coaching staff could be in a much better spot, truly, where I don't think it's bad right now. I just want to be clear about that. But when I look back on it, I just want to see, all right, can you keep this rolling? Because this is a good start, but with everything this coaching staff has said about, hey, we want a top 20 class, we want a top 15 class, whatever it is, you want to make sure you live up to that. And there, you, you have to keep rolling from here. And Lars, that being said, let's build the rest of what this offensive class could look like. Right after a message from our good friends over at LinkedIn, because when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free because LinkedIn isn't just in the job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role in any given month. Over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. You can hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn because LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. And that's why two and a half million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. You can post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown college. That's linkedin.com slash lockdown college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So Lars, Washington has seven commits in the 2025 class right now. Six of them play offense. There are two offensive linemen. There's a running back. There are two quarterbacks and a wide receiver. It's great. There's some really talented guys in there. Dash Beerly, Raiden Vinesbright, uh, Julian McMahon, Jake Flores. Just there are a bunch of names that, you know, we've talked about at length on the show already, but now it kind of feels like those guys were always going to kind of be the foundation of this class. When you look at, at Dash, who was committed to Jed's Jed at Arizona. When you look at Jake Flores, who was one of the really, really early building blocks and now it kind of comes down to, all right, what are you going to do to continue to build on this? And how do you round this out? Is, is there anybody that you're looking at in particular as somebody who maybe you say, this is kind of my number one guy in, in this class? Right as a perfect segue off of Champ Talele, Douglas here too. Yeah. Like when if you if you could get two blue chip four-star offensive linemen in this class, that – is something I don't even think Brennan Carroll did in Arizona. Like he, he again, you get Jonas Savani, you get um, uh, Jordan Morgan, you get you get a good plenty of offensive linemen that were talented in Arizona. But I don't think, especially in year one, Brennan Carroll ever had that type of offensive line talent. So when you look at what Washington had to replace along the offensive line this past season, and what the prospects are moving forward. That is a that would be a big step when you're going into the Big Ten. You have Douglas Uju, Champ Chalele. You get a couple of veterans from the portal that you're going to hold over for next season potentially. That that's how you build the offense to start out. Like that, we, right. you, again, I'm sure there's a couple of other receivers that we'll talk about, a couple of tight ends that we'll talk about, but none of it matters if you don't have a good offensive line because we've seen what happens, you know, with bad offensive lines in Washington. Now just imagine going to the Big Ten playing even stiffer competition and having an, a week or a, a week offensive line, it's not going to hold up. So I Douglas Uchi for me is kind of that kind of that next one in the boat. We're not not per se like next guy to commit, but if I had to say like, hey, how how would you want to build out this class? That to me right there would be the next step. 
So I'm, I'm certainly with you there, but there, there are two guys that I'm looking at where Douglas Utu is certainly a good one to talk about, but there are a couple other guys that I've, I've got my eye on. One of them is three-star tackle John Mills. We talked about a little bit earlier where he's still got a Texas visit. Seems like the, uh, Texas is the favorites right now, but that's another guy where, you know, you look at some of the, the talent that Brandon Carroll did have at Arizona where he developed Jordan Morgan, who was an underrated three-star guy. He developed Jonas Savanin in the same light. And I think that John Mills can kind of be that same guy. 6'6", 330, somebody who certainly has that shoe tackle build, but is somebody that I think would work really, really well in the system. So that's a name that I really do want to keep an eye on. But I'm looking mainly at receivers right now, where there are some tight ends as well. You mentioned Vander Plug, Caleb Edwards, and Baron Nwane are the other two guys that they're just heavily recruiting right now at the position. But for me, I, it really comes down to adding more pass catchers where a couple more talented pass catchers would really, really go well in just in Jed Fish's offense. And the number one guy for me right now is Chris Lawson. That's the guy who's got his commitment date set. It's going to be June 21st. It sounds like it it's a really, really tight battle between Washington and Oregon. And not only would that be a nice, you know, victory over your rivals after they took Dimitri Manning, but that's that's a guy who, the more I watch his film, shout out to our, our good buddy Ben Glassmeyer, who wrote a fantastic analysis piece on Chris Lawson over on Husky's Wire that you need to go check out. Uh, but that's somebody who I really like what he could be in this offense, would be on the outside, on the inside. He's got just the ability after the catch, just the, the ball skills and traffic, everything you need to be, I don't know if he'd be a number one target the, at the college level, but he certainly get, could be like a like a two-way or just a very, very consistent, reliable target. And he's somebody who, when I look at the rest of what Washington's class could be, if you're able to get Andrew March or Donovan Olabodi or Philip Bell or whoever else it might be to help round out that class, Chris Lawson is somebody who he could be, I, it wouldn't matter to me if he's, you know, the third ranked receiver of four guys if they end up taking four or if he's the top ranked receiver. This is somebody who I think has a really, really high floor at the college level, but also in the right system when utilized correctly can have a really high ceiling as well. I'm a hundred percent with you. I think to be transparent, I think Phil Bell goes to Ohio state. Chris Lawson, I could see going either or to Oregon or Washington. I know he has a good relationship with junior Adams. I know that name kind of triggers some people in, up in Seattle, but when you look at Don, um, Dylan Robinson's another option where I know you like him at receiver, I still prefer him at cornerback. But again, if you take if he wants to play receiver, you take just him. take him. It does not matter. So, just take him. So then that's so it, 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 when you start to run down that list of okay, we're expecting Andrew Marsh to not come to Washington, but if Andrew Marsh ends up saying, hey, you know what, I'm betting on Kevin Cummings. All right, let's do it. I, I, sure. I truly don't care who the third receiver is at that point. If it's Chris Lawson, if it's Donald, I don't. Does not matter. You can get a walk on. You can Camden Sermon could be the third receiver in that in that group, but I would not care. No, no disrespect to Camden, but just when you if you can get Andrew Marsh, I don't care. But that's when you start to look talent, at the man. that, and that's why it's 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 no disrespect to anybody else that I just mentioned, but it's also I haven't necessarily gotten a sense that Washington's out of it for anybody in ter- that we've mentioned in terms of sure. there's there's no where Washington is not a distant third or fourth option for some of these guys and. I put a story out on Athlon Sports about Donovan Ogudi, where everybody basically was like, "Oh, it's it's probably more for more for fluff or for for attention or things like that." But tell me the last time a, a recruit on the East Coast put on for a school on the West Coast, especially in the Northwest, that wasn't Oregon. Like Washington isn't a school where, at least traditionally, right, where you don't go to a camp and say, "Hey, look at look at all this Washington gear I'm wearing." It's like, "Oh, you're looking at Washington." Interesting. It's it's it always yeah. catches people by surprise, and so I, I do think there are some credence there to where Donovan Old Booty might surprise some people, and then when you look at tight end, obviously, yeah, Vander, Pl- pick two of the three. I wouldn't be surprised if it's um, Vander Plu and Caleb Edwards. Would not be surprised if it's Vander Plu and Baron Nwana. I sure. would be a little surprised if it's Caleb Edwards and Baron Nwana, just because they they those two seem like they're. They could end up at Washington together. I would just be surprised if that ends up being the mix. But when you look at all the types of talent that they're bringing in, they're all elite talent that other schools want. So that's yeah. a good position for Washington to have where you look at the, in the past where, okay, it was three-star, three-star, and you got a four-star. It's, no, it's four-star, four-star, and sure, we'll take a three-star that we could negotiate into a four-star down the road. That's the type of talent Washington is laying the foundation with. And so when you look at the rest of this offense, yeah, and then just imagine what 26 is going to be because 
this class is building for that foundation too. Absolutely. Where I, I, I really like what you said there because I want to see if they can keep this momentum going. I'm, I'm very curious to see what this coaching staff can do with that. But I just, the more I look at what this class could be, you still need to make sure you started off on a high note. John Mills got highlighted. Darius Afalava is somebody I wanted to circle back around to again, because that's another guy where I really like his talent. I think that he'd be one of the guys where he would certainly be an interior player moving forward, but that's just another high ceiling guy that I really like. He's got four stars in the 247 composite. And as you said earlier, stars certainly are not everything, but it's about building that momentum. And I think that one thing that you and I probably both need to do a better job of highlighting is that's something that matters in a national scale where we know that once stars come in at well, once these, you know, five star, three star, whoever it is, as Devin Hyde said to us the other day, once those guys come to Washington, it doesn't matter anymore. We know that we know it doesn't matter once you get to the college level, but one thing that would certainly continue to improve Washington's national standing and prove all those things is getting more of those high caliber guys that, you know, are looking at wherever it be, Texas, Florida, Ohio state, whatever, whatever school it is that you want to say, like getting champ Talele, who have some of these big time national offers, the more of those guys that come to Washington and get developed, the more that it can move that Washington can continue to move forward on a national scale. And there, there are certainly some guys and Chris Lawson is the one I want to highlight one more time where there are certainly a lot of guys like that that could continue to elevate this program that are still out there. And over the next couple couple of weeks, months, whatever you want to call it, it's going to be really, really interesting to see where some of these guys end up. And Lars, with that being said, as always, thank you so much for being here. Thank you all every day for tuning in. We know we've gotten a little bit away from our normal schedule. It's supposed to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, it's, you know, we, we wanted to make sure we, we got all this breaking news to you as soon as we possibly could. And, you know, the best way to make sure that you're subscribed and you stay up to date whenever you get an, uh, we decide to drop a new episode like this, you got to subscribe wherever you get your podcast, whether that's YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, we're there, we're everywhere, updating the channel with new content every single day or Monday, Wednesday, Friday for the most part, but we want to make sure you get everything like this so make sure you subscribe again wherever you get your podcast like the video click that little bell so you never miss when we post a new episode uh you got any questions comments concerns drop them right down below if you're audio only please leave us a five-star review thank you so much for tuning in and we will talk to you on monday